Manga versus American comics, East versus West. I'm not gonna repeat that because I already talked about that in a past video that I did about this very subject. Most of that video was actually talking about kind of the decline of the American side of things and why it was declining, how some of the stories are probably, you know, just told at this point. They, they've been going on forever with the same characters for almost a hundred years. And yet when I started looking into it and I started really wondering, man, where did a lot of the manga and anime that we love come from and who are the guys that were making the stuff? It's a pretty interesting story and it actually gives me a lot of hope for the American side of storytelling and the American side of comics or American manga. That's right, I said American manga. Ladies and gentlemen, I am really, really excited because honestly, there's hope for the future. It's not all doom and gloom and we don't have to abandon the American creators for the Japanese creators or vice versa or however you wanna think about it. We're actually gonna enter a really, really awesome time period coming very, very soon. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for being here on A Drink With Crazy. If it's your first time here, check the link in the description below. I just got this brand new shirt, the I Support Indie Creator shirt. If you guys would love to pick one up, check out the A Drink With Crazy store and do that for me. Whether your favorite creator or indie creator is a YouTuber, a musician, or a tabletop RPG creator, or a novel writer, or a comic book creator, uh, go pick up the shirt, wear this out in public, and get that conversation started out there. So one of the things that I've been thinking of a lot lately is the inspiration and how the Western media and the Japanese media have really been kind of intertwined for, I mean, a very long time at this point, since really right after the uh, World War. And some can argue it goes back even further into the, you know, the 1800s, but let's just focus on this. After the World War, cinema became a very, very widely uh, accepted thing around the world or a widely available thing around the world where American media and Japanese media were kind of coming over and crossing over and people were kind of seeing how each of us from the West and the East put things together. In addition to that, Walt Disney was obviously popular all over the world and inspired many creators. Uh, one of which, the godfather of manga, essentially. I can't remember his name off the top. He did Astro Boy, though. Well, that's the American name. I, I don't remember the Japanese name, but you know who I'm talking about. He was heavily inspired by Disney, as well as Akira Toriyama. Um, if you don't know who Akira Toriyama is, uh, you live under a rock somewhere and you probably aren't very familiar with YouTube. Akira Toriyama is the legendary creator, God rest his soul, of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z and the subsequent other Dragon Ball properties that have been released. And if you guys caught the thumbnail, you would know that I put Izuku Midoriya next to Spider-Man because Spider-Man was a huge inspiration for the creator of My Hero Academia. Again, all names that I do forget, and that's just me. I'm bad with names. But it's so interesting to see how the Western media inspired some of the most prolific creators of the last hundred years and even the modern day. It's really interesting to see that because as Western comics, or I should say American comics, are on the decline with the superhero stories because, well, they've just been drawn out, we're seeing a generation of young people inspired by those who were inspired by us, which is really cool. You know, younger generations now are looking at the Dragon Ball Zs and the My Hero Academias and the One Pieces and all of that stuff, which, and many of them were definitely inspired by what we were doing here in the US. And again, for the last <clears throat> 75 years or so, we've been kind of trading back and forth. You know, there are a lot of people out there who were um, inspired by what Jap Japan was doing with their cinema. And what I'm seeing now is the rise of a lot of independent creators who are deciding to take matters into their own hands and write their own stories. And the funny thing is, is the heavy, heavy manga influence is big. A few of the stories that I can think of off the top of my head are Amaranth Angels, which is uh, more of a Western or a, or a Western Amera manga or however you want to call that. Uh, that's been put out this year on, in the indie front, as well as my buddy's comic, uh, G Said I Too. And then in addition to that, my favorite that I've read this year by a guy known as Hero Darky Dark Online, his comic, Relentlessly Bullied Hero. Now, when you ask him, man, you guys are writing these awesome stories and you're putting these, this fantastic artwork to the page, 
what was it that really inspired you guys and why go for the Amera manga, which is what I think it's pretty much affectionately been called at this point. Why go that route? And they say, man, just watching some of these stories when we were younger, you know, and watching the stories that are coming out now, they really do have that good faith that the hero always kind of makes the right decision type thing. And the hero is a hero is a hero. It doesn't really get into a lot of the dark and the grim. And honestly, What's so cool to me to see in the space that we're living in right now is that the generation of young Americans coming up right now are inspired by the people who were inspired by Walt Disney. So they're kind of like grand inspired, like, like grandkids inspired by Walt Disney because they're seeing the people who were there who were absolutely inspired by those heartfelt stories that we used to tell here in the US. And it almost feels like kind of like spiritually or creatively, we passed that baton over to Japan a long time ago, or they just took it from us. We, either way, probably poor phrasing there. And now because of how big those medias are here in the US, we've got a generation of people who are kind of taking that baton back, kind of the, the, the Olympic flame, so to speak. That flame is coming back home. You know, and we're starting to see people who now that it's gone over to the East and the East took what we had and they put their flavors into it. Now they're sending that back over to us and we're going to put our flavors into it. And that really gives me a lot of hope for the future of storytelling. Yeah, I know it's uh, depressing to kind of look at a lot of the comic book superheroes that we grew up with and loved uh, and not so well. And a lot of the stories lately not really being told well, but the hope is that we're actually going to still see stories told all over the world in every different language. And what's awesome about that is it seems like the good stories, it seems like that flame that was lit so long ago in the early days of comics and in the early days of animation, it never got extinguished. It just, you know, went, got borrowed by some people for a while, and now it's coming back. And honestly, this is what makes me so excited to see the next generation of American storytelling through the Amerimangas. So guys, let me know what you think about this. I know comics versus manga is kind of a big thing. How do you feel about Amerimanga? Can, even though it's done in, an, in, a, in a manga style, but it's obviously left to right instead of right to left, is that something that you're interested in? Does it have to be true to the original? Does it have to actually be right to left reading? Are you absolutely not okay with the idea of kind of mixing everything that has kind of already been happening? Are you down with it and are you ready to see the new and the improved and hopefully the great to come in the future. Let me know down below and I will leave links for the books that I shouted out here today so you guys can go check those out. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, I support indie creators. I hope you do too. And until next time, cheers, everybody.